There are three other callers on the call. 0 .0 .0 .0 .0. Okay, so we don't need to give any port for this, okay? Because the port is 80, we don't need to give the port 80, okay? If the port is different port, definitely we have to give it. The port is 81, we have to give. So port is, we assign port 80, that's why we don't need to give any port. So simply, uh, after that, simply, uh, uh, one, simply pass that the URL pattern and the access, okay? But here we got 500 errors. So to fix that 500 errors, check the plugin logs on the web server machine. The plugin will be located in the web server machine. Yeah, and the, the, see here the reason is so app node server one on host local host. That means it is trying to route the request to the server one on the local host. But server one is existed on the remote machine. That's why it is not able to route the request. Okay. Yeah. So we have to change one entry in the plugin icon CLG because when I install a WebSphere application server, I I have I choose the host name is local host. That's why those entries are passed in the plugin also. So when we install WebSphere application server, we have to use the in real environment we have to use the machine IP or host name. Okay. Then we don't need to change after the generation and propagation of the plugins. Now when we when I Tell the web speed application server I choose the local host that's why those entries pass to here okay so just edit the plugin iphone cfg.xml file and uh, so it is using HTTP protocol so HTTP protocol port number is 9081 so just to change this uh, local host entry to the IP machine IP so machine IP Zero dot zero dot machine IP is four right yeah four so save it okay, restart is not required for plugin changes we'll wait one minute the change will be reflected automatically. Here I am able to access the application. So it's clear, right? Any questions? So did you understand the architecture? And did you understand the architecture of this uh, environment or not? Yes. You understand, right? So, yes. so the environment I show you, no. So I'll, I'll, uh, des I'll uh, draw the architecture. Where we mentioned that uh, uh, IHS admin admin service, admin admin agent. You know, configure your server script automatically creates that IHS admin service also. Okay. Okay. That script generates. Okay. That script automatically creates. So to verify the, the configuration of the uh, I get the admin service in the admin console. One second.
verify the configuration of IHS admin service. You click on the web server one. So here remote web server management. Okay, the 8008 port is the IHS admin port and the username and password. Okay, VAS admin and VAS admin. And another thing is under ports also we need to give the admin port here also. Okay. So that configure web server script automatically creates the remote web server IHS admin service details. So I am going to draw that environment act environment architecture here. So one is there. So front end one IHS is there and the back end. Okay. So the host name host name is the IP host name is IHS host okay or IP IP is so IHS is installed here And this is plugin. I suspect. So in this mission, I installed a deployment manager and I installed two nodes. The machine name is here, post name. Post name or IP. IP is ten dot zero dot zero dot four. Okay. So I installed DMGR on the same machine and server one app node. Okay, and the server is server one. App mode. So what? So here, IHS admin service also running. IHS admin. So okay. So application is running on this server one. Okay, to access that application from this box. Okay, so we have to HTTP the IP address ten dot zero dot zero dot four colon that default port nine zero eight one here here in this case from I'm accessing the app from the server one. Okay. To access the same app from the web server. So enter the HTTP colon ten dot zero dot zero dot three slash snoop. Okay, web server is running on eighty port. So if the port is eighty, we don't need to mention. Okay. So to manage this web server, the DMGR communicates to IHS admin service, and then IHS admin service we can manage. So, yeah. did you understand this architecture? Any questions? Oh, okay. I can able to draft. Are you able to understand? Uh, this architecture, no. Are you practicing or not? Oh, I am practicing, but uh, so what I is the question? Uh, 
uh, where you are where you are not understanding in in this architecture the hardest is uh, from the gmgr to the ishs admin like how does that work i don't know that. like two you know two of these diagrams like how does it relate each other like, uh, I'm a bit confused. No, the, uh, the scenario is two physical missions are there. In one physical mission, I install a deployment manager profile and two app server profiles. Okay. okay. Uh, or one app server profile. Okay. So in uh, all are installed in one mission, complete web sphere in your own environment. So I installed the IBM HTTP server on remote mission. That remote mission IP is 10.0.0.3. So this mission IP is 10.0.0.4. Okay. So uh, so I am managing that web server from the deployment manager using IHS admin. So using IHS admin service. Okay. So if I deploy that application, okay. Well, so if I deploy that, uh, this. Uh, one mission uh, can have multiple uh, JVMs, right? Or app server, right? It's the same thing. Yeah, can have one mission can have. Okay, multiple uh, JVMs. Okay. Yeah, correct. And multiple. So, so one mission contains multiple installation of WebSphere application server and multiple installation of uh, in each installation we can create multiple profiles. So each profile can contain multiple JVMs. Okay, so if you practice the case, you won't get this questions. Uh, okay, so so practice more, then so you can understand the subject. Okay, so okay, so, so this, this plugin can route the request to any of this server. So to access this application, which is running on server one, so we access generally we access with the IP of the JVM, the JVM IP is 10.0.4 and the default port is 9081 and the URL pattern is smooth. 